Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for another Canary Coaching Session. Now today is part one of a multi-part series surrounding calculations in the Canary System. My name is Kyle Kensinger, I'm happy to lead you through the course today. And since today is a 100 level course, we're going to start with the basics and walk through what the calculation server is, cover some best practices, and finally, go over how to create a few calculations. So feel free to use the Zoom features to ask your questions. We do have Canary team members standing by live in the chat. If you've previously joined us for the Introduction to Canary webinar, this slide might look familiar to you. Of course, we're looking at the dashboard of a car. Now, if it's your first time checking out one of our presentations, you might be wondering, what does this have to do with my process data? Well, if you think about it, your car's dashboard is feeding you raw process data. It's telling you how fast you're going, how many miles are on the odometer, how much fuel is left in the tank, and that's all raw data. Now, if a check engine light comes on, that's condition-based data. And many cars today have an indicator of range, or it tells you how many miles you can drive given your current fuel level. So it's running some type of calculation to estimate that KPI. And if we look at these three different types of data, traditionally in the historian, all we have is the raw data. But if we have these raw data tags and group them into assets, then we can create other calculated tags of condition-based rules and calculated KPIs. And the calculation engine is powerful because you can deploy a single calculation to all instances of an asset type. It runs in real time while also backfilling and more than 70 functions are available. And speaking of functions, the calc server is built to fit your needs and the available functions are categorized in three different ways. We have standard OPC foundation aggregates, NCALC functions and operators, as well as custom functions developed by Canary. And a full list of the available functions with descriptions can be found in the knowledge base on the Canary community. And when we jump over to the Canary admin, I will show you exactly where you can access the available functions directly in the calculation server itself. So now that you know a little bit about what the calculation server can do and the functions it offers, let's discuss exactly how the calculation server works. First, it reads data from the view service. The calculation engine can write new output tags in real time or on periodic schedule. Data is pushed into the local sender, which feeds the configured historian or multiple historians. And finally, it self-manages calculation order based on dependencies. Some other key features to point out regarding the calc server include the fact that calculations can be, although they don't have to be, asset-based. You can build and backfill data over a customizable segment of time. You can adjust and repopulate data, including metadata, and getting even deeper into the calc server, you can build calculations on top of other calculations. It really is powerful. And last but not least, you can import and export calculations to help automate the workflow of the team members within your organization. The calculation server gives the data rock stars on your team plenty of options when it comes to types of calculations. But that's enough about the background. Let's switch over to My Canary Administrator and we'll see the Calc Server in action. So here's My Canary Administrator and you'll notice I'm running version 21.4. And this is important because beginning with version 21.4, calcs and events are combined in the same tile within the Canary Administrator. So you'll see I currently have two calculations running and these calcs are writing 129 tags. You can also see the hourly and daily count. 
Since this canary coaching session is Calcs 101, we're only going to cover the calculation side of things, but we will eventually get into events once you have a foundational grasp of how the Calc server works within the canary system. Drilling into the tile, you'll notice I have two tabs at the bottom of the screen, status and settings. We'll start first with the status tab. The calculation server has a status window in the upper left-hand corner. This covers a lot of the same information as what you saw from the main admin screen, but it also includes event status information. Now the calculation status will appear once you've selected a calculation from your list. And if a calculation is in idle state, you'll notice the status information will differ from when a calculation is in live mode. Switching over to the settings tab. So under service settings, we have delayed start time. And this is the amount of time the calculation service takes before it starts running. And actually, it's not really necessary to utilize this delay any longer. In the past, before we made some internal changes, this is a feature utilized to delay the start time of the calc service by 10 seconds or whatever time you chose after a reboot. Because when all the services restart, it would allow the view service time to get up and running before it would start asking views for tags. So we would build a 10 second buffer in. But now that some changes have been made, the view service won't allow anything to connect to it until it's finished building everything it needs to build. So in the latest versions, there is a delay already built into the calculations by default, but at least you know why this setting exists. Destination historians, uh, that's pretty straightforward. That just determines where you want to send your calculations. Mine is set to go to the historian on my local machine, but I could add multiple historians with just a comma separator and then typing in the name of the other historian. Username and user quid. They're no longer needed. Uh, in fact, this is a setting that's going to disappear in an upcoming release. This used to be a setting where if you were trying to connect to a different view service for calcs, uh, but again, that will be going away shortly. Asset instance count is specifically for the asset instance count function. If you have that function chosen, it won't have any type of trigger. So more than likely, it will be embedded in some other expression. This setting is just triggering an update every 30 seconds with the latest value for that specific function. And the same goes for the property function. There is no interval in which this will trigger periodic or value change. So the 60 minute default setting will cause it to be updated every 60 minutes. And that's the default because properties typically don't change very frequently. Checking for new assets, we have it set to every 10 minutes it will check to see if new assets have come online to using your asset-based calculations. So every 10 minutes, the calc server is essentially saying, hey, views, are there any new assets available for me to use to create some new asset-based calculations? And again, you can change the setting. Uh, the default is 10 minutes. Now, if the calc service disconnects from the view service, it will try every 60 seconds to reconnect by default. And again, you can change that interval. The last one is key, and it's max backfilling calculations. This serves as a way to sort of throttle the calc service when it starts up. When calcs need to backfill, you can control how many calculations can backfill simultaneously, just so we're not taking up too many computer resources. You know, imagine if you had 700 calculations that needed to backfill. It would be really taxing on the view service and the system to request so much data all at once. So this setting allows backfilling to occur gradually. And the maximum number of calculations, of course, can be increased or decreased. Jumping back over to the status tab, we currently have 15 calculations configured. And there are buttons to start and stop a calculation. If you have a large number of calculations, you can also type in and find uh, a calculation here by searching for it. You 
can also import some calculations, which is what I want to do next. Here we have some calculations built in the JSON file. Click open. All right, and we've brought in 47 new calculations. Let's dive into these a little deeper. First, you hover over and select a calculation. Double click. In the upper right-hand corner, a system admin can add some comments about these calculations, which can be helpful for other users when they go in to make modifications to a calculation. You can give your calculation a name. If it's asset-based, you can choose the asset path and type. You also have the range if you want to backfill your calculation. Here's where you choose whether it's a value change or periodic. You can set it to run when any tag value changes or only when specific tags change. And here's how you build your calculations. One of the great tools is being able to evaluate a calculation as you're building it out. And that way you can see if there's an error in your syntax. I mentioned earlier about the different types of functions that are available. And here you have uh, a full list of those functions. This is where you would select the tags that make up your calculations and you can search for those and also the different types of operators. Another important note about calculations, you will want to build a calc data set. This is considered a best practice because if you have multiple views constructed and you want to make calculations for them, creating a separate calculation data set for each of those views is key. That way, when you go to pass in the data sets, you create better organization. Maintaining a one-to-one -one approach will really be helpful in the long run as you create more views and continue to add additional assets within your system. Another quick note about calculations from the status tab. Uh, if you see the play button, hover over that, you can actually start or stop a calculation by clicking that. See, as it stopped, it brings the stop button and restart. The pencil icon allows you to edit the calculation. You can also copy or delete a calculation. And if your calculation has an event associated with it, you'll see the bell icon that allows you to view the events. Now, just to wrap up the Canary Coaching Session Calculations 101, let's dive a little bit deeper into one of these calculations. And we'll start with a simple one, just an uh, average calculation. So what we've built here is we're going to backfill to August 27th and we're looking at a periodic change and we've set the interval to five minutes. So this is how frequently the calculation will be executed. And we're going to use our CPU usage total tag. And again, that's just pulling that here from our tag list. And we're looking at over one hour. So this calculation will return a one hour mean average every five minutes. We evaluate and here we have our return. You can get as basic or as complex with your calculations as you would like, but hopefully this training session provided some foundational knowledge that you can build off as we go further into calculations and events in the future. Remember, the Canary community is a great resource. If you have any questions about the Canary system, specifically regarding the available functions of the calculation server, here's the article I mentioned earlier in the coaching session today. This provides the definitions as well as some additional information regarding the OPC standard aggregates. Also includes the definitions of the NCALC functions. 
and finally, goes into some of the custom functions that have been built out by Canary to address typical historian-based analytics. In addition to the knowledge base articles, we have a roadmap for what's on tap in future releases. The Canary Academy can be found under Learn Canary. We also have opportunities for you to leave some feedback and a user forum. Thank you once again for joining us for today's Canary Coaching Session. At this time, we will open it up to your questions, so feel free to use the Zoom features to drop any questions you might have in the chat.